Join our global community of travel lovers at zerototravel.com. Zero to Travel Audio Adventures presents Trekking Nepal, episode 13, Travel Companions. In this episode, we talk about how to get your body fit before the trip and reflect on traveling with another person. This is actually our first recording on the 10th day, and it's the end of the night, and Adorta and I are getting ready for sleepy time. We've got our blankets laid out underneath our sleeping bags to add a little extra padding, and we're staying at a lodge just past Gap, which is a um, really nice, quiet place. It's just a lodge here. There's really no village, and we're finding it's an hour outside of Gap. We're on our way back. <laughs> Um, as we talked about, we didn't make it over the pass, so we're on our way back to our guts and getting kind of sad because although we've been out for a while and we've had a couple conversations where we've talked about, oh, what are we going to eat when we get back to civilization and, oh, think about how we're going to stuff our faces with this chocolate and pizza and beer and all this stuff. But the real, as Anna Dorta blows her nose... <laughs> But the reality is, um, you know, all that's good, but we're, uh, aren't we kind of not wanting this trek to end a little bit? It's getting sad now that it's coming towards the end, and we're making our way back um, to Kathmandu, to the hustle and bustle of the city. Yeah, I really don't, I'm not ready for it to end yet. Uh, I had a really rough day, personally. My back is killing me, and... Second half of the day, my body was feeling beat down, and also my back. I don't know what's wrong with it, but I got some kind of muscle back, lower back issue. So, uh, I just spent a lot of pain. Um, it was a tough walk today, but we made it here in the early afternoon, or I guess late afternoon, around 3 o'clock, and got to relax a bit and had a wonderful dinner with a Danish and American couple and we are a Norwegian American couple so we had a lot of good stuff to talk about and had a lot of laughs and it was really nice to meet some other trekkers and um, have dinner with them wasn't it yeah it was super nice very fun yeah it's great nice meal and um, I had a rough day today and my wife was very nice thanks for your support on this walk sweetheart Mm, likewise. It's been a great way to connect with each other. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. We were talking about it earlier. No TV, no internet, just staying in these little rooms and trying to stay warm sometimes and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. having a lot of laughs and um, talking about little things on the trail and big things in life and everything in between. Mm-hmm. That's right? true. Yeah, it's been nice. Um, are you sad that this track's coming to an end, baby? Yeah, it's it's weird to not see, like, those mountains that we just saw, like, a day ago, like, the Himalayas. The big Himalayas? Yeah, yeah. like, awesome mountains covered with snow, and, but we still have had a good day, pretty good day today. Yeah. It's been, we came to a nice lodge, and I just did the... The sky full of stars is still out there. It's the same, even mm-hmm. if we're up there. The moon's here. a little bigger. The moon is a little bigger. It's growing every day. And we met nice people today. We had good food, mm-hmm. good dinner. Not so good lunch, but dinner was good. <laughs> um, we had Sprite for lunch. That was yeah, good. we had a Sprite. That was <laughs> delicious. And I had my Troika today, my chocolate from Norway that I've been keeping. <laughs> And today I had to crack it. A little treat. It was so good. (laughs) (laughs) Giving yourself some treats on the trail. I really hurt my back on the trek. So I wish I had done some more physical training. And I wish one thing I would recommend if you're going to do some physical training is to just strengthen your core. Just focus on strengthening your core because you're going to be carrying some weights. You're going to be walking a lot. 
and you don't want to have any back issues like yeah, I, I did. I think I was in a better shape than you, actually, to be honest. I was Definitely. more out, and I also helped my dad at the farm before we went. You were more, you had to do a lot of computer work before we left. So you were sitting a lot and you were working a lot in front of the screen. I think it's it's important to be prepared both mentally and physical. So do like everything you can to be, you don't have to be super fit, but you need to like prepare your body. We were walking like nine to 10 hours a day. So, and with- You take a lunch break and-, and yeah, That's you have breaks, lengthy, obviously, but, yeah. but it's long stretches and mm-hmm. and in different conditions conditions and different weather. So it shouldn't really like, no, I can't exercise today because it's not sunny outside. That's not an excuse. The best exercise would be to go hiking with a backpack on. Yeah, exactly. So and, and use your body. And as Jason said, core uh, strength is important. So I would absolutely, absolutely recommend it because you got your back problems and having that in Nepal is not really a good thing or anywhere but you don't want to ruin like a big trip you've planned for for a long time and also spend a lot of money on when, it when like, you could have gotten to physical yeah, better physical yeah. shape don't use that as an excuse not to go though either no no no. you know because like, you know if you're like me sometimes you'll put off I should have worked out harder yeah but I didn't and we wish we had or I wish I had you you were fine yeah, I was fine. <laughs> you were good. <laughs> the back problems of Jason was something new for me because that was the first time he really, I really saw that he was struggling uh, with his back. So that was something new and a little scary like because I didn't really know how it will end up. I ha- hadn't seen him in that pains before. Uh, and it was something that just came one night and then was gone the the next day it was there for the rest of the trip more or less so that was like a new sight to see like and you you don't want to see anyone that you love in pain or struggling with with something for me Anna Dorta I knew she was a strong woman but I really got to know her strength of character and her toughness and one of the ways this happened is because early on in the trek, she, I I had never experienced this with her before, but she had, I wouldn't say an emotional breakdown, but she had a bit of a breakdown, I guess. She, she was, cra- she was starting to crack in her mind a little bit and it could have gone in a bad way. And there was a lot weighing on. I think there was the pressure. She was worried a lot about the safety of the trip. And then she had gotten this, urinary tract infection and we were climbing into the Himalayas and everything was uncertain and we were just getting used to life on the trail. I I, I mean, I'm just, I, Anna Dorta can speak to where she was. I'm just guessing there was a combination of these things and probably a lot more that I don't know about. But she went to a place that I had never experienced with her before because she's generally got it together and she's pretty on point and having a good time and if she's having an issue with something she lets you know and she was so vulnerable and so like she was slipping into a place that that I had never seen her before mentally and I just I was scared and I felt so I felt for her I wanted to help I I knew there was nothing I could really say or do but I just did my best to try to be there and be supportive and pull her out And and we were going through this where we were staying in this uh place i can't remember which village but there was a it was the second night and it was a tin roof and there was a monsoon and i think this is what put anadorta over the edge because it was such an intense storm it was something storm and rainstorm something that doesn't happen this time of year and we knew if it was going like that down here then it was just dumping snow up on top and i think she was already stressed out about the past and the people that had died weeks earlier and yeah. I was thinking about landslide because of the monsoon and I I never been in that place before either so mentally it's like yeah it's it was scary for can me can you describe it I have I had never experienced it before but I think it was a panic attack really that was putting me totally out I was I never experienced it before or after but it was super scary and I just felt like I lost, 
I felt like I was in a really unsafe environment basically with everything you like get mentally. your head back and feeling that yeah. you were okay and and that's something that i normally never experienced and taking that and being able to see her come back and get up the next day i think we had a great breakfast hitting the trail you know even that night she she had pulled out pull herself from this very emotionally devastating weird place yeah just wanted to get out of it yeah and then coming back and just being so strong and leading the charge and like just being such a strong woman and and i don't know i love you babe i was so proud of you for having those emotions and experiencing them and then taking it and turning it around and coming back you're just a strong woman so it was these are the kinds of things, these little things that happen along the way as a couple when you travel together that you go through, that you get to see all the intimate moments, you know, my whether it's my back or Anna Dorta struggling with something or, you know, we all have little struggles along the way, but then you share those things and you help each other through it and it just brings the bond uh, together that much closer. So uh, we felt, I think, very, very connected during the trek and afterwards. This trip brought us... Yeah closer together in indefinable ways i think it's nice to have that experience to share like the those great memories we went to a very special place together and we got to share amazing travel together it's just good and it doesn't matter like if it's your spouse or is it a friend or is it a family member or it's just nice to have uh we have both been traveling solo and that has its benefits too but i uh, I'm glad on this trip that I was doing it with somebody and with I you, remember. obviously. But it's it's nice to sh- have somebody to share the memories with. I remember us talking about this along the way and just saying that we were really grateful to be sharing the experience together. And like Anna Dorta said, we both value independence. We value solo travel. But we were very grateful and excited to be sharing this trip together. Yeah. It was awesome. And it was also like a kind of a extra honeymoon for us. So, of course, it was special. Trekking is a very special way to travel. Very therapeutic. You yeah. get like a lot of time to think. And and also like when you do it with somebody, like we're married and and you, you get a lot of good talks in. Mm-hmm. And it's it's social, but it's also like, it's for yourself too. Sometimes you walk by yourself and that's nice. Sometimes you walk with your husband or your guide or somebody else that you meet maybe. And all of it is nice. You see nature, the beautiful nature, and you see these people, smiling, amazing people that lives in, in very different conditions than what we are used to. And it makes you think, it makes you be very thankful for what you have, but also like see the opportunity that it's so many ways of living and doing things. And the hard work for those that lives up in the mountains are, you appreciate, we shared like some some half liter of Sprite some days because we just needed the sugar. And just like knowing that that had been like carried up by a horse or people and yeah it's just unbelievable but yeah tracking is is a great way using your body in general is a great way of traveling i would say you you earn your meal at the end of the day there's this feeling of like you said you can you can be on your own as much as you want or with other people along the way if you want to, but it's an experience you can have within nature. It's a great way to travel in a slow way, meaningful way. And you can can really pay attention to your surroundings and you're away from, you're out in nature. So you're away from everything digital and social media and the digital world and anything that has to do with a screen. (laughs) This is the opposite of that. In that way, I always find so much peace and just relaxation and fun. Yeah, you're in the moment a lot more, I think. Yeah, and trekking as a way to travel is, like you said, all the benefits of like the health and being out there and and earning it in the slow travel and using your body and clearing your mind and traveling in this unique way. And you think about it, well, for us, it's like 
going there and trekking and it's it's an adventure travel trip kind of or if you had to label it uh it's a it's a journey it's a trip for the nepalese it's their everyday life yeah. i mean this is where they live so if their village is seven days walking from where we got dropped off which there they were i mean every we weren't the only ones we weren't choosing to walk along a road where you could drive everybody has to walk <laughs> to their village i always remember that one guy in in the village the cook yeah that had worked at base camp it was in low and it was about seven days in to the trek yeah and thinking about where he had been traveling around the world to different places working as a cook on a uh, big expeditions thinking about his just his trip to the airport yeah you know having he could probably do it in less than seven days but having to walk basically a week out of the village then catch a bus was it six hours or something no, to, to Kathmandu airport no, and then get on a plane and go where he needs to go. I mean, that's, that's not something you think about, you know, mostly in, in the Western society, you just jump in a cab or you get a ride to the airport and then you fly somewhere. So thinking about having to walk a week before you can even get to the airport is crazy. So trekking in Nepal is special too, I think, because trekking, I'd been trekking in Patagonia and in on multi-day backpacking trips in different places around the world. And to me, trekking and hiking, multi-day, trekking essentially just multi-day hiking is like a walking meditation because yeah. it's so nice to just be in nature and just your only job is to get up and walk yeah. and get somewhere yeah. and enjoy the journey along the way. And in Nepal, it seems so special because you got to experience not only the scenery but the people and the villages as you're walking through the mountains a couple tips that we haven't mentioned that we have forgot about that we don't want to forget up at the higher altitudes it gets mighty cold at night so Mm -hmm. ask for hot water before you go to bed and just uh fill your water bottle with hot water Mm -hmm. and uh stick it in your sleeping bag keep you nice and toasty and another thing that uh, i did today and this only works obviously if it's warmer or sunnier um when you're washing your laundry uh outside it stays wet for a long time so hang it all around the outside of your bag And just hike with it hanging from your bag and it'll dry up really nicely throughout the day as the sun hits it. Um, So they're a nice little trick to um, help you out on the trail. Mm -hmm. So end of the 10th day. um, This night was the night we were doing the pass originally tonight. Yeah, we would be getting up at 2 in the morning, I guess, or 3 or 4 and going over. Yeah. Too much snow still now, though, it sounds like. But Mm -hmm. yeah, how do you feel about... We feel good about our decision still, but uh, as you come down lower in altitude, you'll start to question it if you turn around. But we didn't have the proper gear to get over at that mm. pass right yeah. now. Yeah. And we've heard that the only people getting over are people with mountaineering gear right now, yeah. which we don't have. We're just trekking. Trekking Nepal, coming up in episode 14. So it's day 11 and we're just hitting the trail. Isn't it invigorating? Yeah, we have a different, three different kind of mounts. Okay, so we're about to try the, the rock she. Should we tell the yak man story? This audio adventure series has been brought to you by ZeroToTravel.com. Ideas and advice to help make any of your travel dreams a reality. Join our global community of travel lovers at ZeroToTravel.com. Hey, it's Jason here. And if you love trekking, I invite you to stop by ZeroToTravel.com slash trekking to join our global community of hikers and discover the ultimate resource on trekking worldwide. You'll also learn about our upcoming authentic small group walking adventures. That's ZeroToTravel.com slash trekking. Trekking.